I have planned flights a lot of times, but TSA has always sent me for a loop. The 311 liquid rule, all the rules surrounding an otherwise ordinary baggage lock, and the dreaded prohibited item list, there's too much to worry about. And there's always something that's either not bagged right, doesn't fit correctly, or just looks wrong. Fun fact, 5% of travelers end up missing their flights due to these reasons, and a good number of them have claimed it's because they were stopped by airport security. Now, the airport and the airline can and will stop you for routine checking. If you miss your flight, tough luck. There's not much you can do about it. Today, let's look at how you can go, should go through TSA the right way. Number 10, how to pack liquids the right way. Frequent flyers would know this one pretty well. TSA does not mess around when it comes to liquids. You need to keep your liquids in a separate Ziploc bag that's TSA approved. Not just that, but these liquids need to be less than 3.4 ounces or 100 milliliters. Now, TSA actually explains it better with the 311 rule. That's 3.4 ounces worth of product in a quart sized Ziploc bag and only one bag allowed per passenger. Sounds simple enough, right? Then what's the holdup? While the 311 rule lays it all out, travelers often try to find a workaround. Let's say you have an otherwise 9 ounce squeezy tube of hand cream, but there's less than 3.4 fluid ounces left inside. Does that comply with TSA regulations? It does not, okay? So they will stop you at screening, examine the bottle, and determine whether the fluid inside really is 3.4 ounces. I'll save you the trouble right now. They'll often keep you waiting for longer than necessary during the confirmation process. So if they say it's 3.4 ounces, that means 3.4 ounces in a container that can only hold 3.4 ounces. Also, this includes liquids, gels, creams, and those need to be kept in a quart-sized bag that's separate from the rest of your luggage. I'd say keep it with you on your carry-on, whip it out at screening, and be on your merry way. Number nine, not keeping your electronics in your carry-on. Look, I get it. How big is a carry-on bag really? You'd think that a simple bag with a handful of essentials will do the trick and you can keep the bigger, bulkier things in your luggage. I used to think so too, mostly because it made sense to me. Unfortunately, it wasn't the TSA recommended. Here's the thing. You can keep your electronics in your bag if that's what you want. In doing so though, you're risking having to stand in the longer queue for longer than necessary. Have your bag opened, checked, run through the machine, and then rearrange your bag yourself and go in your way. That's one way, but what I like to do is keep my electronics with me in my carry-on bag, big or small, and have them screen in one go. Scoop them right back up and place them back in my bag and go on my way. It really is that simple. Also, your electronics will be scanned separately. That's to ensure nothing obstructs the scan by being on top or below the device. If it's an electronic gadget, TSA will scan it, save yourself the trouble. Number eight, arriving late to the airport. I feel like this one's been said a million times already, but let me make it a million and one. Don't take the risk, leave for the airport on time. There's always that more than a slight chance that you'll be stopped during screening, there's a larger crowd at the airport, and you have to go through multiple checkpoints. Let's say immigration, passport control, and a horde of other checkpoints, even after you make it inside the airport. Yes, they take just as long, maybe longer, bring a book, sit in the lounge, and kill time at the airport. That's what I always say. I always plan to arrive at the airport three hours before my scheduled flight, just to ensure enough time to get through all the check-ins and screenings. Number seven, secondary security screening selection, the dreaded four S's. I cannot stress this enough and always check your boarding pass before you leave for the airport. Actually, check it the minute that you get it. Besides the basics that you should always look at for, the time, terminal, and personal details, be on the lookout for the dreaded four S's. That's an indication that you have been slack that you've been flagged for whatever reason. TSA keeps a scrutinized and ever-evolving list of things that should be flagged. These include first names, birthplaces, and other things that require a mandatory secondary screening. If you pull the short straw, tough luck. Now the question is, how do you navigate through it? Honestly, your best bet is to getting to your flight in time and beating the secondary screening delay is to get to the airport on time. Number six, wear the right clothes. Airport attire can range from PJs to tuxedos. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that everything you have on can be easily removed, placed securely, and then worn back quickly. Call it airline adequate if you will, but TSA will make sure you take off your shoes, belt, and jacket if you have shoes that lace up. It'll cause you the people behind you to wait longer, so don't be that person. Number five, keep everything in your jacket pockets. This one's just a helpful tip I've picked on, on the, along the way. I realized that while my jackets does have pockets, I do keep mundane things like gum, tissues in it. I keep some things in my pants pockets. That seemed fine to me until I realized I was only wasting time for myself. While my jacket was making on the, its way to the, through the conveyor belt getting screened, I had to empty out my pants pockets again and then put everything back. My jacket made it through the gate before I did. So word to the wise, 
keep all of your pocket items in your jacket. If you don't have a jacket, just place them inside your backpack. It's a lot easier to also keep track of where a bigger item like your back jacket or backpack is than to keep track of where little items are like your wallet keys or like gum wrappers. Number four, listen to the agents. Look, while it's easy to get frustrated with the TS agent who's telling you to empty out your pockets, open your bags, and take up your shoes, you need to remember that it's their job to keep you safe. While most of TSA's safety protocols don't make sense to a lot of people, they have a working system in place and it's best to comply with. There is no workaround. So one of the best tips I can give you in this video, as someone who's just as frustrated with airport security as the next person, is to listen to what the agents are telling you. They'll reinforce what you'll have to do when you get to the front of this line several times as you're waiting in the back. There'll be signs and banners all around you to know what to do. You can even look at the people ahead of you and see what they're doing. If the four people in front of you had to take their shoes off, so would you probably. One thing I've learned is that TSA agents can be very irritable sometimes also. Not listening to one of their directions will just lead to a conflict that goes back and forth between you two and wasting more time. Number three, drink your liquids or don't bring them. Airports have water fountains, all of them do, okay? So they're not necessarily to refill your bottles, but they're there to fill them up in the first place if you want to. Here's the thing, I've seen so many people wide-eyed with their jaws on the floor when they were told they either had to drink whatever was in their reusable bottle or go all the way back to the line to empty out their bottle. So what do you think these people settled on? Imagine being at the front of the line, chugging your drink, just so you can move on to the next step. Look, I get it. It's great to stay hydrated, but why take the risk of having to overhydrate when you can just fill your bottle once you're inside the terminal? These are just some things I learned after going through TSA several times, being told to either chug in 30 seconds or go back to the line and wait another 30 minutes. I chug like my life depended on it. So make sure you finish your water. Number two, watch your things like a hawk. This one should go without saying, but I'll say it anyway, keep your eyes on your belongings. You need to remember that while TSA will make sure to facilitate and inspect your stuff, double and then triple check your bags. They won't help you put everything back. It's to avoid being held liable for missing items and it makes sense in hindsight. However, it's something I realized many people didn't know. They thought that after the bags were quite literally gutted, they'd get a hand or two getting their things back in place. It's wishful thinking though. So understand that you're the only one who's responsible for your things at TSA. The TSA agents can stand guard for a second or two, but they have to move on to the next person in line. Your things are literally your responsibility. And the last tip, there is a right lineup. Something I've picked up on the way is that there can be a right lineup. Not necessarily suggesting that there's a wrong one, but there are telltale signs to identify which lineup will take longer and which one will be smooth sailing. The line where TSA agents are actually facilitating the line to be moving is what you should be on the lookout for. But here's the thing, families, especially ones with little toddlers, will take longer. Parents bring tablets, snacks for their kids, thinking something fun and colorful won't get flagged. If you're a parent, let me tell you that it probably will. Besides that, I also noticed that there are sometimes two agents in the same line. One of them is doing most of the work, if not all of the work, and the other looks like they're slacking off. Are they really though? They're not, okay? So that's usually a supervisor who's overseeing a trainee. And so in that line, there's always room for error when you're just they're just starting out in the line. So try to avoid that as well. Lastly, with all respect, lines where it looks like the people just look like they will be slower should be avoided. I mean, let's be real. Who's more likely to get through the TS line faster? A healthy young adult or an elderly person who is slow moving, okay? And I mean this with respect. And so that's about it. Those were 10 airport security tips to help you get through TSA faster, more efficiently, and hassle-free. What are some tips that you picked up on your journey? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you all in the next video.